Uh, today is really a day of recognizing remarkable individuals for acts of great generosity, kindness, and uh, strength. Uh, I have a great honor of introducing Congressman Smith. I happen to, uh, uh, to uh, hail from the great state of New Jersey, mm -hmm. although it took me a number of years before I could say it. Uh, I lived in New York for many years. Uh, Congressman, Congressman Smith, uh, before I tell a little story, I want to read his titles because I think it's, it's, uh, it's, it, it goes, it, it's appropriate. Uh, Congressman Smith is, uh, uh, is, repre is representing the uh, district in New Jersey for the past 26 years from the age of 27. I think this is probably a typo from the age of 17, <laughs> judging from his uh, vigorous appearance. Uh, he now serves as a uh, senior member of the House Foreign Affairs Committee and a ranking Republican of the co uh, Committee on Africa and Global Health Subcommittee. This is also known for those of you in the know. Um, uh, he is a ranking member of the Committee on Security and Cooperation in Europe, uh, which is the Helsinki Committee. <clears throat> now, this, uh, this is a very important man. This is a man who, is, who makes decisions that affect the way our country relates to the world and the way our country and uh, the world relates to us. Now, I don't know much about politicians, but when I think about politicians, I think of them standing on the floor of Congress, talking, legislating, arguing, making things happen. I do not think of them as getting on the plane and journeying to uh, foreign countries, uh, sworn enemies of the United States which is what Congressman Smith did in 1980s, when in 1982 he went to Moscow to meet and support a family of uh, Yuli Kashalovsky, who would have given a lot to be with us today, but simply could not. Uh, he went way beyond that. He returned to the United States and helped pass a, a resolution that eventually allowed Yuli and his family to immigrate. Uh, this is a man who did not, who contributed to the Soviet Jewry movement in much more than simple words, but his actions, his uh, determination, and his courage. And before uh, we ask him to come up, I just wanted to read a couple of letters that came for the congressman uh, and to get, uh, show him some beautiful pictures. Uh, this is a letter from Yuli. Uh, Dear Chris, I regret so much that I don't have an opportunity to greet you personally in New York. Believe me, all my heart was striving to meet you again. Since I welcomed you and Marie to my tiny apartment in Moscow, I have always cherished the warm memories and the very special ties which link us together. After the Soviets invaded Afghanistan in 1979, we refuseniks entered our black years. In my case, the Soviet authorities did everything possible to stop my Hebrew teaching activities and to suppress our struggle for freedom. Since the invasion, I was at risk, more than ever before, of being imprisoned, which KGB made sure to remind me of every few weeks. Then on May 4, 1982, the U.S. House Resolution 269 called upon the Soviet Union to release me and my family, and you initiated and sponsored uh, this resolution. After the resolution was declared, the KGB lowered the pressure against me. I know that you know the punishing sword of the KGB was stopped midway, thanks to your efforts. You continued to help me countless times until my freedom was won and my dream of living in Israel with my family was fulfilled. I keep in my heart the feelings of deepest friendship and gratitude to you, my dear friend. It's because <coughs> of people like you that I love and respect America, and this is my legacy to children in Israel. Warmest regard to you and to Marie, and I hope to meet you again. Yours, Yuli. AGC Soviet Jury Liberty Award, presented with gratitude to the Congressman Chris Smith. On the 40th anniversary of the Soviet Jury Movement, in recognition of your outspoken, highly effective legislative advocacy in defense of Soviet Jews, and for your answer, uh, uh, unserving a dedication to the rights and dignity. American Jewish Committee on behalf of the Russian American Jewish community, January 9, 2008. Thank you, Chris.
And I just wanted to show a couple of pictures this of Chris yours. just a few years ago at that visit, and this uh, some mementos oh, yes. for you as oh, well. Good. Thank you. You did all this. Yeah. Thank, you. thank you very much. Dr. Branovan, thank you so much for that very kind introduction. And uh, to all of you, thank you uh, to the American Jewish Committee for, for, for all of you for this, uh, this recognition. Uh, uh, it, but that's not what it's really all about. We're here to honor you and the wonderful work, the witness that you bore on, on behalf of human rights, on behalf of freedom. Uh, and, and that's what I would like to speak about tonight. I would like to just recognize David Harris for having made and continuing to make a huge difference in human rights. I've known him for 27 years, uh, for my entirety of my uh, congressional career, and he has been a real leader. Mark Levin, who's, who's uh, I think he's still here. Uh, Mark was the one who actually came and visited me in my office and, uh, and, and really told me about the plight of Soviet Jewry uh, that got me into this movement back in 1981. Uh, so, and I want to thank the American Jewish Community, uh, Committee, I should say, uh, for its principled leadership and successful advocacy. Uh, you know how to do it. You don't just, you know, have an idea and, and, uh, and then go about it in a slipshod way. Uh, you methodically and painstakingly work uh, to get real tangible results. So I want to, again, recognize the uh, American Jewish community for your un unparalleled effectiveness uh, not just on behalf of Soviet Jews, but on behalf of human rights uh, around the world. You know, I was in Jerusalem just two days ago, and now I know where that letter from Sharansky came from, because I mentioned I'd be here. Uh, <laughs> but I didn't ask him for it, believe me. Uh, uh, and um, that certainly will be framed in my office. Uh, but I was there with Congressman Frank Wolf and Joe Pitts, and we did have breakfast with him. It was, as it always is, a, an honor just to be with Sharansky, uh, to benefit from his wit as well as his wisdom. While most of our conversation centered on peace, justice, security, and reconciliation are more accurately the absence of those things, especially with the ominous rise of Hamas, it was yet another opportunity, like tonight, to recall the bravery and the tenacity of Jewish refuseniks, and in like manner to remember the advocates, like the AJC, who never ceased striving who never grew weary, and if you did, you didn't show it or let it affect your work, and never gave up in the pursuit of freedom. In 1982, during my first term in the Congress, David Harris, Mark Levin, Jerry Goodman, and a few others put together a congressional trip, as they often did, uh, to Moscow and to Leningrad to meet refuseniks in their homes and to engage with Soviet leaders. For hours on end, we met with so many of you. I had a lot of strong coffee, which kept me up all, all week. Uh, but we heard stories of Soviet physical and mental abuse, systematic harassment, gulags, and psychiatric prisons, and an array of seemingly wanton, brutal acts of anti-Semitism. <coughs> to apply for an exit visa, a universally recognized human right, which on paper at least, the Soviet Union had acceded to, was to invite the cruelty and the wrath of the KGB <laughs> and other small-minded, morally stunted communist thugs. Of course, I'm not telling you anything you don't already know. You experienced it. To courageously seek freedom, as so many of you did in this room, rendered you ineligible for employment in Lenin's farcical workers' paradise. The Soviet Union, militantly atheistic and morally incoherent, wouldn't let you leave. But they didn't want you to stay either a bizarre paradox. To a new 27-year-old congressman, it was bewildering and deeply troubling. Why do they hate the Jews? Why the anti-Semitic obsession? In Dr. Alexander Lerner's apartment, we, our delegation, heard Sharansky's mother admonish us to do more for her son, for she feared his life was in jeopardy. Raise Anatoly's situation with the highest officials, she asked us, which of course we did. A few years later and shortly after Sharansky's release, Congressman Wolf and I visited Perm Camp 35 in the Ural Mountains, a horrific gulag filled with prisoners of conscience, even then as Glasnost and Petrostroika were beginning to have some positive impact. To the other dismay of C Lieutenant Colonel Ossin, the Perm Camp's KGB warden, we interviewed and videotaped most of the prisoners and pushed for their release. When Sharansky saw the prisoners we had interviewed on the video, he told us, they are my friends. Speak out for them. 
On that first of many trips back in 1982, we also met with Yuli Kasharovsky, who explained to us how he had taught Hebrew, notwithstanding persistent threats, searches, and arrests. I was just amazed. He justified them. He did it with class. He did it with no malice. He did it with humor. In meetings with Soviet leaders, I got to experience firsthand and for the first time duplicitous, mean-spirited government officials. And I thought our IRS was bad. <laughs> These men would listen to you, but they wouldn't hear. Like robots, they all said the same thing and had the same talking points. The deceits, lies, and double talk were both numbing and motivating. I remember thinking and screaming in my mind, these guys are jerks. Some of us got angry and we got motivated. We resolved to pray and to pray first and foremost. Psalm 37 and 73 were particularly helpful for me and to work to secure the release of Soviet Jews however long it took. Good intentions by scores of congressmen, Democrats and Republicans, senators and even presidents, however, needed direction. It is clear to me that absent the expertise, the well-honed strategies, reliable information, and actionable intelligence provided by the AJC and the S NCSJ and others, would we would have accomplished, nobody would have accomplished much. In human rights work, hyperbole and falsehood are lethal. The bad guys know when you're faking it or acting out of ignoble intentions. The Jewish groups, I'm happy to say, were accurate painstakingly accurate. My colleagues and I in the Congress always had supreme confidence in the information we received. And the Jewish groups wrote the book on turning advocacy into success, in large part by linking human rights with trade. The incalculable wisdom of the jackson vanek Amendment, linking most favored nation status with Soviet Jewish immigration, was pure genius and enabled the freedom of more than 657,000 Soviet Jews between 1975 and 1991 alone, and more than 1.4 million over the last 40 years. And not only that, but the success of the jackson vanek Amendment revolutionized human rights policy for the better on multiple fronts. It seems to me that all but the most naive know that diplomacy and moral suasion has only limited appeal or efficacy in dealings with dictatorship. Mere talk, especially the niceties of diplomatic chatter, is often cheap. Jackson Vanek proved that the judicious application of economic rewards and punishments yield positive human rights results and freedom for many who are oppressed. I would note parenthetically that I've authored numerous human rights laws over the years, including the Trafficking Victims Protection Act of 2000, 2003, and 2005, laws designed to combat sex and labor trafficking. The lessons learned from Jackson Vanek are the, are the reason, the reason, why I and others, despite considerable opposition, insisted that foreign aid penalties be applied to nations complicit in or indifferent to human trafficking. Predictably, such linkage has and is working well to mitigate and combat this modern-day manifestation of slavery. Linkage tells bullies that we mean business. So tonight, I hope that every former refusenik and prisoners of conscience like Yuri Fedorov knows how deeply respected and admired and esteemed you really are. You stood up to a Goliath-like, tyrannical, anti-Semitic dictatorship that seemingly had all the cards, had all the power to destroy, including a brutal secret police, and yet you prevailed. You inspired generations past, and you inspire today all who seek freedom, all who seek human rights, the rule of just laws and liberty. You are, has been said before, heroes, and the world is forever in your debt. Thank you.